we talk about doctors or even think about them, we normally associate them with the words such as love, care, and good health, not rape. On today's Crime Corner, we'll be talking about one such doctor, a doctor respected in the community, but a doctor that committed a heinous crime. John Skinnerbach was raised in Zimbabwe and received his medical degree from the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa. In 1987, he moved to Canada in a small town known as Klippling, and there he practiced at the Klippling Medical Center as a doctor. In 1991, John met a woman named Lisa Dillman. Lisa had two daughters from her previous marriage, and when she and John got married, they also conceived two daughters. In 1993, John received his Canadian citizenship. On the night of October 1992, John sedated and raped a 23-year-old patient, Candace, also known as a candy. It is said he used a strong sedative, which also caused an amnesiac effect. Candace was, however, able to remember the rape and reported it to the police. John Skinnerbar's blood sample was taken, but it didn't match the semen of the alleged rapist, thus clearing him of any suspicion. But Candace was convinced that John had raped her, and in 1993 she asked the test to be conducted again, but it came back negative, and in 1994 the case was closed. Candace refused to give up, and she hired a private investigator. The private investigator broke into John's car and obtained a DNA sample. This DNA sample matched the semen on Candace's underwear as well as pants. This led to a third official DNA test being conducted. However, when it was done, it was found that the sample was too small and of a poor quality to be used. A breakthrough for Candace came in 1997 when Lisa Dillman found out that John had been drugging and raping her 15-year-old daughter from her previous marriage. Lisa reported this to the police and a fourth DNA test was conducted and it was found that the DNA belonged to the rapist. From this, it was found that John had been faking DNA tests. This was a shocking revelation. During his 1999 trial, John revealed how he was able to manage to fake a DNA test. He stated that he used a 15 centimeter Penrose tube filled with another man's blood as well as anticoagulants in his arm. During the test, John was able to trick the lab technician in drawing blood from the place in which the tube was implanted. Therefore, John's blood wasn't actually being drawn. John was found guilty of sexual assault, administering of a toxic substance, as well as obstruction of justice. He received a six-year sentence. He was also stripped of his medical license and his wife divorced him. In 2003, John was released from prison after only serving a four of the six-year sentence. In July 2004, John came back to South Africa and stayed with his mother in Durban. Within three weeks of arriving in South Africa, he applied to the South African Health Professions Council to work again in medicine. However, he withdrew his application. What is scary though is that the council was considering his application.